This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. The Carry Force store. Ah, that's Russell Liu. And that's Jay Fidel. Yeah, he's Good afternoon. co host and host here on Think Tech Asia. We're going to talk about, uh, gee, WeChat. WeChat? WeChat. WeChat. It's you know, the we, real deal. It's, a, it's WeChat versus, versus Apple, in fact. Okay, and it's, the, it's changing Western business models, and you are excited about that. You are so excited you can't even breathe about it, I know. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank That's you. That's Russell. Thank you, Jay. He is uh, he's a longtime lawyer in Honolulu and also in, in Beijing, 15 years in Beijing. He's a law professor in China, and he's a consultant about things Chinese and American in Beijing. And I don't know, you know what he does with his spare time. Maybe he does this with his spare time. All my energies are devoted to this show. <laughs> so WeChat, we are so interested in WeChat. We talked about it last time. We only had a you know like touch and go last time. There's much more about WeChat, and I put it on my phone. I don't know how to use it yet, but let's talk about what WeChat is. Yeah, what is WeChat? Well, WeChat started off as a a communication network, social network device, just like Line, WhatsApp, Facebook. You know, you could send pictures over it. You could uh, send messages, text messages. You can send voice files. You can send Word files, PowerPoint files, videos. Sounds like email to me. Yes. But it's more but, than that. But there's a revolution in WeChat. And, and, and you can see in China, everybody in China uses smartphones. And got a picture. We got a picture. We got a picture to of that. show you exactly how intense that is. I mean, they're surpassing the U.S. And, and this is a typical day. Intensity. This is a typical day lining up right now at, at a uh, uh, subway station. Yeah. It's incredible how people spare moments are productive. You think that they're playing the games? No, they're doing things on WeChat. They not. They don't do games, right? I mean, they must do games at other times. But my sense of it is the Chinese with the smartphones, they're doing business. They're doing constructive things or communication things. Yeah. Well, they discovered the American way. They're doing games too. Also. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but what the beauty about the WeChat is that it's, it's transformed the lives of 938 million people in China. And that, that's it, like, uh, gee, what is that's probably about 70% of the whole country. And that's a very big country. And the amount of, of volume of transactions done through WeChat is going to be incredible. We're going to talk about that. But when I say it's transforming the lives as a revolution, it's because now with this one app, it does it all. It's a lifestyle changer. You can do many things that you couldn't do in America. For example, through WeChat, if you go to a restaurant, you can split a, split a bill. Imagine Dutch Street. Imagine the problem. My bill is $10.68. And if you're the smart guy, I'm sorry, guys, I've got a $20 bill. I can't change it. So he forgets about it and conveniently doesn't pay for a share. But in China, with WeChat, you can easily take out your application, type in $10.68, send it to the guy who's paying it through his, who's the host is paying on through so his. So they can card. adjust the bill that way. They adjust the bill, and everybody's paid in real time. Everybody walks away happy. Nobody feels shortchanged. No, you can do that with PayPal. Mm -hmm. Why is WeChat better than PayPal? Well, you can do more than just that. You can go to stores. You can go out to buy a cup of coffee. I think we've got a picture shot of some of these where you're actually making payments. Mm -hmm. um, and also, uh, w you can do things called group chat. Let me talk about that for a minute, forget about it. And we got a picture of the group chat. What is group chat? Is this well, group chat? That's group chat. See on the top it says group chat. Yeah. You can add as many users as you want on this group chat. For example, when I have a law class, I have 81 students. I have one group chat room, one way chat room with 78 students. So when I say, we're going to have to read these cases out of the textbook, I will scan the cases, I'll send it over WeChat, everybody has the cases, no excuses. Everybody comes prepared for class. And if I have a problem I want them to solve, I send it out to WeChat. If somebody has a question, they send me a message in WeChat, and everybody in the class gets to see it. So it, it's, it's a revolution changing it. So, uh, okay, so it's like a, a, an enhanced uh, message, enhanced that's SMS that's message. That's right. I can see everybody's messages together. And I can see who's, who's there, right? That's right. Well, let me tell you how does it affect Hawaii. You know, last year at the Hawaii Tourism Authority, uh, the, their, their major global conference in uh, September, we had uh, a representative from C-Trips, the largest online tour operator from China. You're talking millions and millions of 
Chinese right. travelers that buy online everything from hotels to plane tickets to train tickets to uh, renting cars. And it's incredible because what they do, for example, if they have 230 people traveling to Hawaii, they may not be in the same tour group, but they will set up a wait chat, group chat, for all of these travelers coming to Hawaii. And in real time, somebody could be at Helena's restaurant and saying, this poi tastes excellent. Oh, Takes a wow. picture of poi, say, you guys should try it. So they can be all over town talking to each other. That's the right. group remains you know, connected. They, they have an integrity as a group, whatever they do. Huh? And so, exactly. So through this real-time communication, uh, somebody else in the group will say, well, we better schedule to go to Helena's. Food's great. Or if the service is bad at this restaurant, they'll put it down. So it, it's a real game changer. Now, you know, that has all kinds of social effect, right? Because, you know, of, of course, of course, and we, we can get to this in a minute, but that's good for business, too. That's a business organization would benefit by that big time. But, you know, where you have a, a vertical kind of hierarchy where the boss tells everybody what to do and the, nobody can really respond to him, or at least they can't do horizontal vertical connection, right? With WeChat, WeChat, um, and this group group chat thing. Everybody's in the same room, including the boss, including everybody else. They become one team as big as you ever wanted it to be. That's right. This, this allows for the organization of the group, whether it's a, a, a travel group or, or a business organization, mm -hmm. where everybody can talk to each other and share ideas and come up with new solutions and be creative, you mm -hmm. know? that That's very interesting. It's very dynamic. So it's really changing and transforming the lives of everyday people, from people in the workplace, people traveling, uh, st students uh, in a college class. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's it's something I can't do that on any other software. You know, I don't, I, do that that, I don't think there's any other software you can do that. But you know, the beauty about it is that it it covers your whole life. The whole day you can be in this ecosystem of WeChat. For example, when I go out and get a cup of coffee. My favorite place is Costa Coffee. We got a picture of Costa Coffee. Costa Coffee. Uh, I'm at the coffee this shop. Is, this is a picture we've seen. And no, it's Costa Coffee is 26 quiet. I don't carry cash. And I simply go to Costa Coffee. Costa is, is the competitor of Starbucks. It's actually large UK British coffee house. And so there you go with my cup of That's coffee. That's about $2.50 for that cup of coffee. Yeah. Right, right? Yeah. But actually it's more than that. But maybe. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but you see. I get to do my payment, and that's to the other ones, Alipay. Alibaba has their yeah. uh, uh, type of uh, way chat pay. But again, this is transferring lives. In case anybody didn't see the last time we did this, can you describe how this transaction is accomplished? Sure. Simply take out my, uh, my application, turn on WeChat. It's usually on, already on in my smartphone. Yeah. And I will simply, for example, go to the store. For example, let's, let's do a transaction. I've got one where the, the store even has a sign. There's a store here, and it has a sign, and simply, I'm going to buy something, and it tells me it accepts WeChat Pay, okay? And I just will scan the Q code, and when I scan the Q so code... You're just taking a picture of the Q code. I take a picture of it, I like a regular bar scanner, and it scans it, and then what happens is then I will scan it, and I will, they will have on the scanner maybe the price, and I will type it in. This is the amount, bingo, and I hit so Pay. So you gotta, you got to say Pay. I'll hit pay. I'll hit the bar that says pay. What happens? And then it says authentication. So I have my fingerprint. I touch the phone and so it security. secures it. And what happens is the funds in my bank automatically transfer over. Instantly. Instantly. Yeah. So imagine. Don't cash. forget the sound. There's no swish, unfortunately. There's no, There's is no there, swish. Is there a bing sound? No bing. Not it yet. It just happens all by itself. It happens all by itself. But it'll say, say, payment successful. And it's wonderful because you know what happens? Um, on my bank application, my bank application to the banks in China, they'll send me an SMS text that says, you have just concluded a transaction. This amount was taken from your account. You know so as I have much as backup. they do. I, everybody's on the same page. Everybody's on the same page. And so the beauty about it is that cash turns faster in an economy. Sure. You don't need to carry cash. And remember about credit cards. Credit cards, they've got to do that check on the computer. Are you the right Jay Fidel? Do you have money? That you did, did you did you pay your last billing cycle? If you didn't pay, we're not going to approve of it. But this goes from bank, and the money's either there or not there, and transactions are done deal. There's no waiting. There's what happens no waiting if I don't have money in my account? Well, I think it would say it, transaction not successful. End of story, and everybody knows story. it. And so you'll including get, the guy with the coffee. That's right, but you'll get your cash out. So, uh, <laughs> but again, you know, the, the beauty about it is that 
everything's done in real time, and it, and you can affect a lot of people. You know. So this is this is preferable to anything else. I mean, is there anything else that competes with it? Well, there's that, that's why it's interesting because it's a change in model now we have. It's a change in model, Jay. It's a change of how we rethink business. Okay, let's look at the Apple. The Apple has been very successful, but okay. Uh, Again, Apple is successful, but let's take a look what WeChat does. In 2016, $1.2 trillion in mobile payments were made. Okay? Trillion. Trillion. On Apple. It, Apple. And again, Apple is not within the top five uh, so, payment, mobile payment platforms. So that, the $1.2 trillion is Apple or WeChat? That is WeChat. 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 Apple is less than that. Not even on the list. Not on the list of five e-commerce vendors. So, so, but I mean, if, if I'm living in China, you know, and I'm all excited about WeChat, is there any other arrangements that I would consider? Or is this the one where, you know, nearly a billion people use it and that's that? It's a settled issue. There's WeChat Pay, there's Alipay, uh, there's a couple of them, but WeChat does it all. WeChat, you can even, help, you, even if you're locating a taxi and you need a taxi, WeChat will find, so WeChat will find a taxi and will dispatch a taxi to come and pick you up. So it's like Uber in that regard. It's, it, so it's Uber and PayPal and email and messaging and all that all rolled into one. Or, for example, if, you want, if you're going to go to a wedding and you don't have time to buy a gift, but you want to send the Chinese way, you send a, an envelope, a red packet of money, so you would send it through WeChat. And somebody would deliver it's a red, red packet of money. Would deliver directly to the recipient. Well, that's lovely. Huh? So Saves you all that trouble. And it's incredible because the transactions today are global. So we're going to see WeChat more and more in the U.S. For example, imagine all these Chinese tourists that came to Hawaii, came to Waikiki Beach, all the vendors accepted WeChat. They don't, they're not limited to $10,000 of cash. cash uh, the old problem bringing it in, the customs yeah. regulations. So now and all that. they're pumping a lot of money in our economy. Yeah. They're buying things, a lot and of it's things. It's not in cash. The cash thing about ten thousand dollars is no longer yeah. relevant. Yes. Well, there's no regulations yet, but yeah. again, yeah. so you imagine what can happen. It's a revolution. Yeah. You know, you don't need to to, to fussle and hassle with that. Yeah. What does it cost me to have WeChat? It's free. You can download. It's free? It. Did you, you say can, it's free? You said it's free. I thought you said it's free. You say it's free. 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 It's completely free. free. Completely free. So if I want to pay for dinner, no charge to me. Just the dinner. Yeah. If I want to buy the coffee, no charge, just the coffee. Yeah. yeah, just well, well, you hit the WeChat Pay, use the WeChat Pay. Okay, oh, okay, but is, is there a percentage come out like in well, PayPal? Well, again, the difference is that in the American model, typically through Apple, if you take it, if you buy an application through Apple Store, every application you buy, Apple takes a thirty percent chunk of it, thirty mm. percent. But in WeChat, in that ecosystem, it's free. It's free. It can be games, applications. It can be maybe some uh, video. So they must something. be selling you something on it. I mean, it's got all this functionality. Well, what, what, what happens you is you have to pay anything, and how do they get paid? Well, the way the Chinese do it is that their custom is we'll send a tip through WeChat. I'm going to send you a tip because this is great. Really? Right, 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 great. But you know what? WeChat doesn't take a percentage of it. But now Apple says, wait a minute. If you are in our, in our ecosystem, and you've got an iPhone, that means we should take a royalty <laughs> out of this, a 30% jump. So Jealous. <laughs> that's the big fight. That's the big fight. So the big fight is now Apple stepping its foot in China and saying, you are going to have to be in our ecosystem. You're going to have to pay us that royalty fee. Mm -hmm. And so they're clamping down on WeChat. So there's a little fight going on between that. But it, it's, 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 it's challenged the way business is done in China, the way 738 million users. 938. Yeah. No, 100, wait. 900, what's it? 900. 938 yeah, million. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of users, JJ. Yeah, yeah. But so anyway, let's, let's take a short break, you know, while we can sort of integrate all this information. And, and then we're going to come back. And I, I'd like to talk about, um, you know, how, how we here in Americaville you know, can take advantage of, of WeChat or WeChat, however you pronounce it, because I know it goes both ways, and see what the future is like for us as well as them. That's Russell Liu. He's a lawyer and a consultant and a law professor. All those things rolled into one. Kind of a WeChat of all, of all the legal things you can imagine. All in one ecosystem. All in one, in one fantastic package. Uh, we'll be right back after this break.
This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Hello, I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha! I'm going to the game and it's going to be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today because I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you want to be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says let's go. I told you we'd come back. I'm Jay Fidel. That is Russell Liu, law professor, lawyer, multi-jurisdictions, consultant, speaks Mandarin, say something in Mandarin. Kai. I knew you'd say that. Uh, and we're talking today about WeChat or WeChat, depending on where you are. And, um, you know, the thing about it is that Russell explained this to me last time, and I downloaded WeChat <clears throat> on my phone. It's on, living on my phone now. <clears throat> Very interesting, sophisticated program. And it's got a real future, uh, you know, in, in the U.S., but um, you have to have an account somewhere with all that money passing. And you have an account in China. So your account is in a bank in China somewhere, but there are no accounts that we know of here yet, right, in this country. So you go down to Waikiki. Like any Chinese visitor, you go down to Waikiki and you want to do something. Can you do something? Can you spend money with your WeChat? WeChat? Well, unfortunately, um I can't use WeChat to pay and buy things here. I, I just, by coincidence, I, I bumped into one of the, um, I guess, general counsel with Bank of Hawaii yesterday. Mm. And I was telling him about WeChat, how excited I was. And so, well, Bank of Hawaii's coming out with something where you can pay each other money. But the question was, can you pay vendors? How about somebody who has WeChat that has a big bank account in China? Imagine if there's a bank here that was a clearinghouse that, w that did a joint venture with Bank of China or one of the big Chinese banks and Chinese uh, tourists can come here electronically, make the payment out of their account, go through the bank here locally, converts it, boom, payments made in a local vendor. You know, things are becoming much more global, uh, cross Well, they are, except I have to say that Hawaii, generally speaking, in terms of banking is behind. You know, we're not that sophisticated about internet banking or about banking online at all. And uh, the mainland, you know, you can find much more sophisticated arrangements with, the, you know, the big banks, even the small banks. So, you know, if you're asking whether the local banks here in Hawaii are going to adopt WeChat or allow banking operations mm -hmm. to permit WeChat, I don't think that's going to happen right away. What, what's your answer to that? Well, my answer is this. It's very simple. It's because we have a very different culture in China in terms of technology, a very different culture in the U.S. In the U.S., we started with uh, computers, desktop computers. Then it went to laptops. Then it got to iPads. And it kind of stopped there. It kind of stopped on your MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. Okay? You, you do online banking, you get to your computer. Mm -hmm. okay, maybe through your phone. But in China, it leapfrogged. It went from laptop straight to the smartphone. Forget about the iPads. That iPhone or Huawei phone or any smartphone, as long as I got my WeChat, I can be anywhere in the country. I can buy things. I can buy over the internet. I can send money to somebody in Xinjiang, the city of Xinjiang. Mm -hmm. I can do anything what I want. I, I can, can buy business. me real tickets. I can, I can do sell business. things too, right? That's right. I can sell things. I can do everything through a WeChat. I don't need anything else. I can do it 24 hours. That's why people are on their 
smartphones. You can have a business standing that. on a street corner. You know, and for example, I'll give you an example. Um, it has brought back small business in China. You know, backbone of any economy. It's not just a big company. It's a big business. It's a small business. For example, at the university, there is a bake shop in the underground floor of a university center in the corner, in the back. And so my uh, friends from the U.S. came visiting and said, well, how do these guys make money? They're a coffee shop. They're a bake shop. Nobody's going to see them. Location, location, location. And I said, yeah, the Chinese are not in bricks and mortars. They're not in the physical location. No, just get it that done. Store, yeah. No, no, no. That store at 2 o'clock, it finishes taking all the orders that are sent over through the smartphone. Yeah. And it, it bakes everything from 2 o'clock to night. And that business books a larger order than university students coming <laughs> to buy a cup of coffee or, or a cheesecake. So next morning, the delivery guys come, and they take all those orders out and send it across Beijing. And that guy is smart because he's got a bake shop that low overhead is connected to the smartphone and the internet. His front end is all on the smartphone. That's right. So what I'm saying is changing the ecosystem of how we're doing business. Again, we're, we're challenging the American model, bricks and mortars, big retail Alamona shopping centers. We're challenging the way Apple does its business. If you want to run that app, you come through my store, but I take 30% off. In China, they're having a, tons of people, developers, entertainers, artists, that are contributing through the WeChat system. And WeChat doesn't take any money from them. And people will say, that's good, so I'll tip you. So they make more money by getting the nationwide out of mm. 90 to 30 million users. What's, what's an average tip? Well, uh, they said it's about 80 something, $86 and some odd cents a month. That's how much the, the typical WeChat user is, is sending in tip money mm -hmm. a month whoever it may be. So, so I'm going to what would interest me is, uh, is, is bringing it here. Um, how do you bring it here? This sounds very appealing, right? And uh, the, the only essential element that's missing, it seems like, I mean, you can, I downloaded it. You can, anybody can download WeChat right now today. Anybody in this country can download it. But you can't really send money with it because you have to have an account somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there are any American banks that, that have bought into this WeChat account, WeChat account. So question is, um, am I right? That's all it needs? It needs this banking arrangement? And once somebody can establish a bank to support uh, WeChat, in, the in this country it's called WeChat, right? um, that, that would open the floodgates on this program? Well, I think that if I were the smart, if I was the bank, I'd have a separate company that would facilitate all the payments through a WeChat. And what American company. American company. Well, maybe I'd do a joint venture in WeChat. I don't know I, if it has to be an American company. You, I mean, you know, it can be a global a company. Legal but, problem there. But well, you can put the server back in the U.S. Okay, sure. there's security, uh, uh, certain data privacy laws, and so forth. Okay, but the important point is that you've got the software running, you got the banks, you've got your consumers who and vendors who all deposit accounts there, and all the banks will send it an interbank agreement saying, let's use this vehicle. You'd have to make a deposit into this bank. Well, you'd have a, a bank somehow, account. It, it's right? like a debit card, but think of not having a card, but through your phone. Yeah. And the good thing about it is, is that it, it'll make the lives and transfer lives to everybody. Now, is it on credit? If I exceed my deposit, you know, my debit card deposit, so to speak, um, is it going to stop? It's going to say, no funds, sorry, no soap, can't do that. Or is it going to give me credit on it and charge me interest on, on it? It'll say transaction negative. not authorized of some sort. So you, you must process. have money to cover so it. So you, you must have money to cover in your bank account. So it, it changes drastically how we do business in America. It makes the genuine the genuine. You have to have money in your account, okay? So you, you know, won't have... The merchant knows he's going to be... He, is, he's, he can see himself getting he's paid. He's getting paid and, and he's And he can get paid before he provides the goods, too. And exactly. And no, no pro, you know, again, all of these things, there has to be changes, but the culture has to change in the U.S. And if I were Apple, I would start thinking the platform... We've been making our money on hardware. We don't they need to. They must know about this. Why haven't they done it? Because remember, it sort of like goes against the way we do business in America, okay? The bricks and mortars idea. The hardware. You know, Apple is known for its hardware. Aesthetic design, beautiful iPhone, beautiful MacBook design. And in China, it's a prestige thing. It costs a little bit more, but things are changing. Apple is not one of the top sellers in China anymore. Look in the... Uh, websites look at huawei is coming out with this tons of it because wechat does it all you don't need the 
iPhone. You don't need Apple iOS ecosystem. You don't so need it. WeChat does not depend on iOS. It doesn't depend it's, on it's, iOS. So it's generic. It's, it's can generic. Go can go anything. On Android, anything. And so we're seeing Apple actually has slipping on its sales on its iPhone. Mm. And so these things, you have to start rethinking it because, again, So I, I agree that I think people here in this country, in the state of Hawaii anyway, would love to have this. It makes it so easy. It facilitates commerce. And I understand it, and I agree with you. It spins up, you know, it, it, it sort of accelerates uh, the flow of goods and services and money. Well, you know, again, uh, I, I don't understand why nobody's doing it. Well, again, that's all. it's not only just the banks. We have to have a whole ecosystem. We have to have Apple open its architecture up. You no longer this app store, okay? And then, you know, the, and we have to have the phone carriers. We have these contracts where they, they, they lock you in the contracts. Two years, we give these incentives. Don't have that in China. Don't have it in China. I pay as I go. And when I use my time up, I simply will take my WeChat, I press the button to top up, transfer another 100 RMB into that phone account, boom, I'm good to go. I don't need to go to the store, okay? I just simply do it through WeChat. And so it's well, I, I agree with you. This is a low-hanging fruit. It's not that hard to set up. Somebody's going to get this idea. Maybe they'll look at this show. Maybe they'll hear what you have to say, Russell. Uh, and I think it could, it could sweep the country. It could change the country, change the way commerce is done, e-commerce, but also daily commerce, buying widgets at the newsstand, the whole enchilada. Um, just got to figure out how to, how to make it work like WeChat and, ha and have a, a banking you know, backbone for it. Well, an interesting thing came up. A friend saw a newspaper that WeChat were looking for interns for their programs in the U.S. So they're coming. I've just learned well, that two days ago. They're coming. They could, they could establish a banking arrangement, and, and couldn't they? They could establish, but again, uh, you know, it goes back to how does it here locally? Well, why can't we set up a model jurisdiction? Why can't we be more progressive in this jurisdiction? Like, kind of like a Singapore of the U.S. I guarantee you, if, if you went out in the street or, you know, in this city and talked to millennials anyway, but most people, and say, look, no charge, you can download this thing, and when you put some money in the account, even a modest amount of money, you can do business instantly with everyone. Of course, you've got to get the merchants to buy in, but I think they will. I mean, this is, this is a, an event waiting to happen. So we've got to close now. We're out of time, Russell. I'd like you to look at Vivian. That, that's camera two over there. And to mm -hmm. tell her what you'd like people to take away from this show, okay? Ready, go. I think we all have to think differently. We've got to think the future is now. And we're going to have to learn from other models. And I think learning from the WeChat model, we can make our dream better. And I think that um, learning from the Chinese is important because um, they're leapfrogging with technology. And this show is about technology transforming people's lives. Yeah. They leapfrog us, and guess what? We can leapfrog them That's again. That's right. Thank you, Russell. Great to talk to you. Thank you, always. Jay. See you Aloha. next. Aloha. Sai Jian. Sai Jian. Xie Xie.